Hi, this is your host Sapil Bharti and we are here at KubeCon and CloudNativeCon in Salt Lake City in Utah. And today we have with us Dimitri Vlakos, Chief Marketing Officer at Spacelift. Dimitri, it's great to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. Happy to be here. It's my pleasure to host you here, but this is the first time I'm talking to you. So I'm tempted a bit to ask about Spacelift. Talk a bit about the company. What do you folks do? Well, we help people in the infrastructure automation space when it comes to helping them manage from provisioning to configuration management and to governing all of the, their pipelines, that's really what we do. We help them smooth that process and have one place to go to manage all their automation tools underneath. And if you look at this whole cloud, cloud native ecosystem, there are tons of projects, thousands of, of course, Kubernetes is the anchor project. Which are the projects that Spacelift is interested in? Spacelift is really in the infrastructure as code space. So, you know, when you're gonna have your Kubernetes and your clusters and your application workloads sitting on top of your infrastructure, you gotta have the infrastructure for it to work on. And Spacelift really helps you automate the provisioning and management of that infrastructure that underlines all the application workloads you're running. If I ask you, how would you define infrastructure as code? Yeah. And why should folks look at it? And what kind of folks should look at it? How would I define infrastructure as code? I think infrastructure as code is the applying of code techniques to define your infrastructure in an automated fashion that gives you more predictability, clear definition of the infrastructure that's running in your environment and uh, who should use it. I would say that you know any company that's really starting to scale their infrastructure should be looking at infrastructure as code practices because you know if you've got a small environment, it doesn't change much. Uh, you're not spinning up new resources. It might not be uh, that you need, you know, the provisioning part of IC. But when you actually get to now, I need to, if you look at some of the promise of cloud, I need to spin up new resources. I need to adopt quickly. I need to adjust. That's where IC really comes into play. So which means Terraform or OpenTofu is your targeting. Uh, of course, uh, a lot of things happened last year, which led to the creation of Open tofu, yes, and interestingly, I have never seen any other. I mean, <laughs> it's exaggeration, but the way adoption grew, the way community came together around Open tofu was kind of incredible. The same thing happened with Velki as well, and both of the projects are being supported by foundation, like the foundation. Uh, and if I'm not wrong, they also hosted the second uh, kind of Open tofu day here at Well. So, talk a bit about how are you seeing the whole emergence? and evolution of Open Tofu project and the community. I think it was, we had our second Open Tofu Day, which was yesterday. Uh, the first one was op uh, at um, KubeCon in Paris this year. And to just open the scene, kind of, it was packed. We had over 200 people, you know, uh, in that ballroom. And I think what's really interesting about the day and the community is that we're seeing this truly expand from just a few the seeding of the community was really a reaction to Terraform or HashiCorp changing the license of Terraform and then the desire to have it really truly community driven IEC tooling and uh, community. And I think within a very short time, we've seen that. So what you saw yesterday was not only the core developers of the community talking about what's happening, what they're doing, how they're being community driven. You also saw actual industries, it, people from industry platform and DevOps teams coming and saying, whether it's Cisco, AWS, uh, Fidelity, coming and saying, here's how we're using already open tofu at scale to run operations. So I think that's very impressive for such a short-lived project. Can you also talk about, you know, uh, when we look at the project and when you look at the community around it, uh, what are your thoughts in general, you know? So I think what's really interesting about open tofu is that it truly is community driven. So. A lot of open source project I've seen, you've got one company behind it and it's, it's open, but it's kind of closely controlled by one company. Open Tofu is very different. One, it's part of the Linux Foundation, so it's very you know, open source focused and, and will be forever. Two, you've got a number of companies behind it who are each, and, and these companies actually compete in the market. So you've got a very interesting uh, setup where you've got different companies contributing resources and time and support to this project. Uh, and you've got a huge amount of individual contributors from outside the organization uh, or the Open Tofu community 
you know, official core team. So there are over 150 individual contributors who have made contributions to the Open Tofu project already outside of the core team supporting it, which I think speaks a lot to the power of the community we're already seeing. And for those who are wondering, you know, what is to open, open Tofu, just also remind them what led to the creation of Open Tofu. Last year, you know, towards the end of last year, there was a change in the licensing that went from uh, of Terraform, which went from, you know, tr of open source to uh, mean uh, changing licensing where companies might be violating that um, that licensing depending on how they're using Open Tofu, and in response to that. A fork was made of Terraform, Open Tofu was created, and what, what you're really starting to see now is some of the, the 1.8 and 1.9 versions of Open Tofu, which have come across this summer and the fall, you're really starting to see response to requests that have been out in the community for a long time that were never really responded to by Terraform are now being brought to market in Open Tofu and new stuff that you know wasn't thought about before. So you're really seeing a shift to a truly community-driven project come to market. Talk a bit about how is Spacelift involved with Open Tofu community and the project? So we are one of the major contributors. Uh, we sponsor five engineers and they are dedicated to Open Tofu. They don't work on Spacelift. They're you know, just Open Tofu dedicated. So that's how we support it uh, in one way. You know, we are supporters of Open Tofu Day. So we, you know, we're a big supporter of Open Tofu both spiritually, if you will, and financially. Open source can easily solve day one problem. Uh, you can get the code, install it, running, but day two is the challenges of all operationals, but you also need additional features, functionalities, uh, scaling. That's where commercial, so commercial support plays a very critical role in survival or success of open source. So talk about how is Spacelift also commercializing it because a lot of companies, they do need a throat to choke if we can joke, you know, that, hey, we are using Topo and Tofu, we don't have all the new resources or we want to keep those resources for something else. So we want to work with you, so you solve our problem. So talk about how you're also offering commercial support sure. around Open Tofu. So for us, when you look at the role Open Tofu or Terraform or cloud, for, you know, formation, the different tooling underneath that uh, companies use to automate their infrastructure, you know, what they really need on top of that is, okay, how are you gonna orchestrate all that together? So it's one thing to have the technology, write the code that represents your infrastructure, can deploy it. But now if you really wanna build a pipeline around that, how do you actually build that? And that's where Spacelift comes in. So we'll sit on top of OpenTofu, uh, Terraform, Ansible, many different automation technologies underneath. And we allow you to, from integrating with your VCS, so how you're actually holding that code, when you do a pull request, you know, we can actually trigger on that and deploy. We have a whole governance like uh, policy engine. So when you want to deploy and you want to have compliance and security restrictions around it, we allow you to put those, you know, into your pipeline. We also bring you visibility into what's been deployed. So we really wrap a layer of orchestration on top of your infrastructure automation. It, Open Tofu is certainly one we're seeing grow rapidly but we also, there are others that play different roles that we are also orchestrating. Can you also talk about when organizations, companies, teams are looking at migrating to open tofu? What are the pain points that they hit? Second is that, how do you also maintain that, you know, it doesn't matter where they are in their journey. So they can seamlessly move to open tofu and continue. So I think there's two, two parts to an, an answer for that. One is, forget migrating open tofu we run into a lot of customers who have different types of infrastructure automation in different parts of their environment and what they want to be able to do is say how can i have a layer on top that allows me to regardless of the automation technology underneath how can i manage my pipeline in a uniform fashion so i can balance the ability to go fast and speed with the ability to have the control i want i mean that's really what we're talking about with our customers is speed and control so step one is we can manage all these different technologies. We, you don't have to be locked into one. So that's, that's one point of we can help people come in, whether they want to migrate from Terraform to Open Tofu or they're using CloudFormation, whatever, they, they can keep that in place as they build the best practice, might migrate to Open Tofu. We're there to help them smooth that out from a management standpoint. From an actually technology standpoint of migrating to Open Tofu, it's very seamless. We've had a number of people uh, there's 
you know, if you were at the talk yesterday, uh, there's a lot of effort to be backward compatible with Terraform. So we've had several people migrate and it's, it's a seamless process to migrate from Terraform to OpenTofu. Let's move the next step, you know, not that companies who are looking at migrating, but the, the companies who just want to use OpenTofu as their platform there. Uh, what kind of challenges they face? And it has nothing to do with the migration, but it is the kind of problems that comes when you're dealing with, you know, infrastructure as well. So talk about some of those problems and how is space lift, of course, not just by supporting open tofu, but with your own experience, mitigate some of those challenges. The challenges are not anything to do with open tofu per se, right? This is more if I'm going to adopt an infrastructure, also, uh, infrastructure as code approach to my infrastructure, what are we seeing? We, we really look at this as kind of, um, we see people taking, going through five steps. First step is, hey, this looks interesting. I want to start to apply this type of automation. And they might have a couple of people in their platform team or DevOps team or SRE. They can, you know, it depends on the organization, what they call it. And they might start with Terraform or IEC or OpenTofu, you know, on their laptop. And they're doing this, they're defining their infrastructure, they're deploying it, but they don't have a central way to manage it yet. So it's like, hey, this is interesting, but if I'm really going to build my practice around it, how am I going to centralize this? How am I going to make sure the state files, um, you know, people aren't accessing it uh, and changing infrastructure without me knowing what policies can I put in place? That's really challenging if you're just using OpenTOFU or Terraform or any IEC language or tool underneath with just laptops, you know, kind of not centrally managed. So that's usually step one. And people will see benefit, but then they'll also say, okay, how do I really operationalize this? And we're seeing a lot of people go from that step to space lift. We also see sometimes people say, well, this is kind of bringing software-like practices to my infrastructure. I'm going to use my CI-CD tools. And CI-CD tools for software are very different than CI-CD, trying to run a CI-CD pipeline for your infrastructure. So we'll see people use GitHub Actions or Jenkins, and that's sometimes the next step. And that will work somewhat, but it's very different managing infrastructure and the state, the stateful nature of infrastructure than, you know, spitting out uh, code at the end of a, a CSCD pipeline. So that's where people run into another set of challenges. Then they come to something like Spacelift, and that's when they really start to build out their infrastructure pipelines for their internal platform team use. And then the next step is, well, how do I open this up to all my developers for self-service? So those are the steps we see people go through. Excellent, thank you. Now, uh, how, Open to who, of course, is a relatively new, you know, the whole cloud native is relatively yes. you know, or old. It's hard to say that. 10 years old, you know, Kubernetes and Kube uh, CNCF. But uh, how busy is the, is, the, is, the, is the vendor ecosystem? And uh, what edge Space Lift has over other players or incumbents uh, in this space? I think it's a very active space. The, the idea of infrastructure automation. How do I, you know, as you said, it, it's pretty easy when you live in the cloud native bubble to, to realize how still young this whole industry is in the grand scheme, rapidly expanding, major way people deploy new and build new uh, technology. So there's a lot of interest in how do I more and more um, automate my infrastructure. And I think the, the push that we're seeing in security, another big trend is security, of course, and that's kind of also a driver for infrastructure automation because I want to go fast, but I need the security, the compliance, I need that predictability. And so those are two interesting drivers. Now in terms of why space lift, I think there's a couple of things. One, we support the broadest range of infrastructure automation technologies underneath. We've been talking mostly about provisioning. Once you provision, there's a the step of, well, what do I do now? How do I manage the configuration of these resources once they're deployed? So Spacelift does, just doesn't manage your infrastructure provisioning parts of the pipeline. We also can then manage Ansible and other ability to configure and manage those resources longer term after they've been deployed. So that's one big differentiator for us. We can link those together. So you have one pipeline that covers uh, provisioning, configuration management, and then we have a very strong policy engine to govern all of that. So that's one piece. I think the other is just our ability to weave that all together into one workflow is very unique in the industry. For the couple of years, Gen AI has become one of the hottest topic. 
does Gen AI have any role in infrastructure code or infrastructure code in Gen AI deployments? Yes, so I think there's, there's two sides to that coin. One is, as we see people looking to deploy larger and larger infrastructures and clusters and super to support models, right, and GPUs, uh, infrastructure as code is a good, uh, uh, a strong place there to help you manage that, the deployments of that infrastructure for your Gen AI models and your LL, um, your learning models. Now, I think you will see more and more, you know, AI come to the space of helping you understand what should you deploy, how is your deployment going. So I think any ways we can sit side by side with infrastructure engineers, uh, platform engineers, and assist them. You know, that's, that's where I think Gen AI will also come into, into play. Dimitri, once again, thank you so much for joining me today. Of course, talk about Space Leap and this whole ecosystem, Open Tofu, its emergence. Thanks for great insights. And I'd love to have you folks back on the show. Yeah, thank would you. love to. Thank you very much. It's been great talking to you.